Do you guys know where Bogdan is? Is it one day build time? Let's go, let's get started. It starts now, dude. Why are we in the kitchen? I need some oat milk. The one wheel. The one wheel is a great piece of tech. And one of the things we wanted to do for a while is take a cross country trip. When you take these things and you push them to their limits, their range isn't absolutely the best and waiting to charge for them is kind of annoying. If only I could just like take a gas engine and strap it to the top of this thing and then have all the range that I could want. That would be awesome. So we're gonna make that happen today. We got our one wheel, but how are we gonna make this thing gas powered? Well, four years ago, we bought this two stroke engine. It's about three horsepower, similar to the ones you'd find on a gas powered chainsaw. And then on top of there, there's a brushless DC motor. The engine spins the motor, charges up our batteries, and our batteries use the electric motor to give itself full torque and full controllability to balance and drive around just like the normal one wheel. All right, let's figure out how this thing works. And let's try to get it powered up. I have not used this thing in quite a while. Okay, so we got our starter. We have our little control screen, our engine control unit, and then our fuel tank. Now, this thing currently has Absolutely no muffler. Pretty sure that this thing hits like 10,000 RPM or something. So it'll sound more like a Formula One car. Really high pitched screeching noise. This muffler is just a straight pipe. So hopefully this thing will just fire right up, but I kind of doubt that. We will see. Barrel, that's my cyber fender. So I built this a couple of years ago when we were doing the cyber truck. I was like, ah, oh, I want a unique fender for my one wheel. Except uh, I never ended up using it because A, it's really loud. Every time the rocks get kicked up, this thing makes a dinging sound and it's really annoying. But the nice thing, we won't be able to hear it over the engine roar. Let's fill this thing up. This is gonna be like probably 50 to 60 hours of riding, which is a little overkill. I think half tank's a good start. It's a hybrid. I'd be very surprised if on the very first attempt, this thing just fires right up. That's a good sound. Do we just go for it? You know what, honestly, we should probably put on hearing protection. That's not a bad idea. This thing screams. <laughs> I couldn't hear shit. It started, uh -huh. it spun the motor, uh -huh. and it made power. Now our screen doesn't seem to be working, and I don't know why. All right, reset. <laughs> it's back. Okay. okay. All right, everything seems to be working right off the bat. I did not that just expect that to fire right up. So let's go figure out all the electronics now. Are you tired of your boring old browser? It feels like technology is always evolving, but browsers haven't. Until now, Opera takes the best features of all your favorite browsers and combines them into a complete package. But that's not even half of it. Opera's new Lucid Mode can enhance any online video and remove blurring without downloads or installs or waiting. Instead of opening endless windows or using separate desktops to manage tabs, Opera's Tab Island seamlessly organizes your tabs into groups so related tabs stay together and uncluttered. If you have a question, you don't need to blindly search online for random results anymore. Use Opera's built-in AI Aria right in the browser to quickly get answers instead of ads. The whole process is as fast as riding a gas-powered one wheel. Worried about your privacy and annoying trackers? Opera has got you covered with a free VPN and ad blocker, plus a whole lot more. Don't let your browser hold you back. Upgrade to Opera today and unlock the full potential of your browser. I love using Opera to streamline everything I do, especially with Lucid Mode and Aria. Go download it using my link in the description below. We need to figure out how we're gonna connect to the one wheel's battery and what voltages this thing wants. We know that this outputs about 48 volts and then we need to figure out how to mount this onto our fender. Yeah, we actually modded one wheels quite a bit. And actually we have a video on the channel from a while ago where we made a one wheel be able to charge from an electric vehicle charging station. Let's grab some stuff. Some wire, connectors, wire harness tape. Perfect. First things first, I'd like to solder a connector onto this end here. We have our mini saver. We can use that to shrink our heat shrink. Let's get this soldered onto our one wheel. I should be able to measure the voltage of our one wheel right on here. 56.33 volts. And this should be about a full one wheel. So you go from 48 to about you know, 55 volts for it to be happy. All right, quick test. Let's make sure we didn't break anything. One wheel's on and still works. So all we need to know is just make sure we, we want to keep the battery at about you know 60 to 80 percent. So we have full power uh, accelerating and full power braking. So that's about 56 volts. And the problem is this outputs about 48 to 50 volts. So what we're gonna use is we're gonna use one of these boost converters. And what this does is it'll actually step the voltage up. So we can put, you know, 48 volts in, get 56 volts out. And if this fluctuates, this will maintain the same output 
R1 wheel will be happy and our engine will be happy. You need to figure out how to set the current on it as well because what's cool about this particular one is you can actually set how much output power it gives so we don't want to overcharge the batteries too quickly. I'm gonna plug this end into our engine. Hopefully this thing doesn't just catch on fire. We have 48.8 volts, which is exactly where we want to be. In the output we want 56. So right now we're at 48.5, which is not where we want to be. But by simply taking this little screwdriver and turning our TV knob, so we're at 49. I'm just gonna keep turning this up. 51, four, five. Okay, now the only thing I'm not sure about is the constant current setting on this. So this is acting like our one wheel. It's actually pulling power from our uh, converter and telling us exactly how much power it's using and we can then monitor that to make sure that the number we're expecting is exactly what we're actually getting. Do you want that top number to be 56? This will start dropping. That means that this is actually limiting our power now. So this is still drawing seven amps. You can see that it's the same on here, but this is actually limiting our power, which is good. That thing does not sound very happy right now. Oh, is that because these, oh yeah, these are not happy. Okay, we're pulling a little too much power specifically from this one battery. Yeah, it may have pulled a little too much power from this battery a little too quickly. And I don't think it's a very happy battery anymore. Let's do that again, just a little quicker this time. We're not gonna spend a bunch more time on this. Just wanna make sure this whole thing won't catch on fire again. And I think we have all the electronics fully completed. If you'd like to see the full schematic diagram, make sure to check out our maker.io link in the description below. I've gone ahead and wire wrapped our boost converter. We've got our engine, we've got our batteries fuel tank, and our one wheel. We have our fender here. I'm thinking I wanna mount this, probably going back behind me, so I'm not inhaling all the exhaust. The vibration mounts are on the sides here, which is really good, because that means that they won't interfere with our fender. I'm thinking we're gonna pull these feet off, add a couple of screw holes, and just bolt that right onto there. Then just smack on one side with the little monitor, and then the battery and the boost converter right onto the other side. Looking at how to mount this, I kinda want that right there. That's like the perfect width and sits about the perfect height. And what's cool is that this and this little tab, there's two holes on the front, they kind of align really well with where they should be sitting on the fender. I'm gonna just drill a hole straight through the fuel tank. Yeah, see, and it's not gonna leak. Perfect, see, look at this. The thing that I have doubts about is how the heck I'm gonna get this nut in there. What did he say? I'm feeling pretty good about this, Daryl. That fuel tank mounting seems pretty legit. So let's make sure that it still runs properly. Feeling pretty good. Last thing we need is quite literally just to throw this onto the one wheel and plug it in. And there we go. That is a gas powered one wheel. So these are the one wheel diagnostics and you can see the current battery voltage is 56 and a half volts. Hopefully once we start riding, that'll start dropping. And then once it drops below 56, we can turn the engine on and uh, see it uh, charge. It's not light, that's for sure. How's the balance? Pretty bearable, not too bad. I can still do all my maneuvering. So this is all battery power, so this is stealth mode, right? For the first 30 kilometers, you'll be completely electrically powered. Can't even tell you have a 20 pound engine between your legs. Woo! Oh yeah, this thing drives great. The battery voltage is already down to 48.2 volts. That is amazing. It works so much better than I thought it would. I need to do the math, but I'm pretty sure we can get like over 500 kilometers of range on this one. That's so it's also really cool because the engine modulates its RPM based on the battery voltage. You can really tell when regen braking is on because the engine gets quieter. It's yeah. like, oh, I'm coasting. Can't wait to see what one wheel thinks about it. It's time to put this gas powered one wheel to the real test. We're gonna take it on a nice long trip and see if the gas engine can really recharge it and sustain it for extended rides. We're gonna bother absolutely everybody trying to take a nice stroll through this trail. Also, I'm getting pushed back. My battery's dying. Uh oh. It's time to, to charge it up. Better work, because I'm not telling you all the way home. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, I would call that a huge success. 
We did a full two, two and a half hour ride. My battery died and so did Ian's and I was able to charge him and myself while we were riding. This had worked way better than it had any right to. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.